Under the wooden arches raised over this ice rink more than 50 years ago, generations come to skate their days away. In some ways, the state capitol landmark has frozen history in time and honored it with its name, the Douglas and Everett Arena. Douglas Everett was around the rink while you were playing. Yes, 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 I you know. Oh, that's the benefit of being 82. <laughs> hockey player, coach, and New Hampshire Legends of Hockey Hall of Famer Steve Murphy zips around on the Zamboni, staying connected to the arena. He played semi-pro here the year it opened, 1965. So you played hockey on this ice? Correct. There would be 2,500 people in here. It was a social thing. The games were on Saturday night. The people would flock here. It was it, tickets would be sold out on a Tuesday. Steve would often see Doug Everett around the arena he helped build. I thought he was a very uh, stately-looking gentleman. Long before an arena was named for him, Everett carved out a name for himself playing hockey. He arrived at Dartmouth College 100 years ago in 1922 and would become team captain. His face is framed, his story unfaded, on the walls of Thompson Arena where the Dartmouth Big Green practice and play today. When Doug Everett laced up his skates a century ago, the hockey program was young. The 1905-06 season, its very first. Before that, in 1883, St. Paul's School in Everett's hometown of Concord claimed fame to the first hockey game ever played in the United States. The ice was only outside back then, the players chasing the whims of the weather in Hanover, searching for frozen ground to practice, sometimes on the Connecticut River under the shadow of a covered bridge. Games were played on Occam Pond on the edge of campus, or the rink that was here where Memorial Field now stands. <laughs> Three-year-old Mike Chukas grew up in Hanover watching his hockey heroes as a young boy. He says the early teams paved the way. By the time he started playing Dartmouth hockey in the late 1940s, they were really going places. We played in the second ever uh, NCAA Final Four game. They now call it the Frozen Four, but I can't quite bring myself to that. That was the first time most of us had ever flown, of course. I'm up here, right here. He says the Dartmouth hockey ice gets in your blood. He moved home to Hanover and has attended every home game possible since the late 1970s. That's a lot of hockey games. Yes, it is. Yeah, my wife used to remind me of that. <laughs> <laughs> And he thinks about the choices facing the players who skated before him, like Doug Everett, when the NHL was new and salaries not what they are today. When he graduated from Dartmouth in 26, he was uh, recruited by the Bruins, the Maple Leafs, and the New York Rangers. And he turned them all down just to work and live in Concord. He had to have been very well thought of in Concord. Uh, and he certainly was at Dartmouth. Yes, Doug Everett came home to Concord to work. Morrill and Everett Insurance had an office on this corner of North Main Street, a few blocks from the State House. But hockey came calling. He was named to the 1928 Olympic hockey team. Without funding, the United States players did not make the trip to Switzerland to compete. In 1932, he had another Olympic chance. This time, Team USA played, winning a silver medal in Lake Placid, New York. The Olympian returned to Concord. Back in the 1960s, when I was in high school, I worked on an old-fashioned uh, drugstore on Main Street, Robert's Drug, and uh, Marlon Everett, uh, Doug Everett's insurance company, was upstairs over us. State representative and former Speaker of the New Hampshire House, Steve Shirtliff, grew up in Concord and remembers seeing Doug Everett at the soda fountain where he worked. It's now a florist shop. 
of course, I was very impressed as uh, somebody in their teens with seeing an actual Olympian. Always a warm smile, uh, very gracious, very kind, and uh, that impressed me a lot. There is another well-known Everett from Concord, New Hampshire, of the F.E. Everett Turnpike fame, named after Doug's father, Frederick Elwin Everett, the state's first highway commissioner. Ten years after the Everett Turnpike was opened in 1955, his son, Olympic medalist Douglas Newton Everett, was changing the landscape of the state capitol, raising money and interest in building an ice rink. Seen here in the upper left corner along the Merrimack River, those arches reaching 42 feet high. The arena cost $325,000 to build. Ground was broken on the project in April 1965. It opened that November. The city owns the arena, keeping it open seven days a week during skating season. Everett Arena manager Jeff Bardwell is proud to have a photograph of Doug Everett hanging in his office. You know, it's a gathering point for families and friends to come skating. I grew up in New Hampshire, so I remember playing here when I was a kid. He says the arena's name is fitting. Not just the for the Olympic reasons of being a silver medalist, but you know, he's very involved with the community. Doug Everett passed away in Concord at 91 years old. He's now in the New Hampshire Legends of Hockey Hall of Fame and the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. And in his hometown, honored with his name on the arena, he helped build. So more people can feel the joy and the history of the ice in New Hampshire.